Well hello, welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. Um, today eventually we're going to get on to some, uh, some bitmap graphics. Import and we'll import a bitmap called Harry. Now Harry is a young gelding and uh, he's called Harry for the obvious reason that he's got a Harry Potter flash on his forehead. And here we are, we've opened it up and wow, it looks big. And if we zoom it out with our mouse button and we see that it's got handles on it already, if we go and have a look at the handle, bitmap handle, we get this picture up. And if we take a look at the details on here, we'll see that it's, its resolution is only 72 pixels per inch, but it's a big photograph, look, 2000 by 4000. So that's far too big to work with. But I just want you to note the pixels per inch at this moment in time. What we'll do, we'll grab hold of one of the handles and we'll shrink it down so that we can see our page. We can move this onto the page and it still doesn't fit, so we'll shrink it a little bit more. Then we'll go up to the middle of these magnifying glasses and we'll come back to a normal page. This is our machine capability, what we see on the page here. So we'll just move this picture around a little bit more. We'll just go and have a look at the handle, the bitmap handle. And we'll see now, because I've shrunk it, the resolution has gone up to 532 pixels per inch. It's still a 2000 by 400 pixel picture, um, but we've crammed more pixels to the inch um, into the page. From what I can understand of the manual, there's a recommendation that you should work with this pixel value at somewhere between 500 and 1000. That means we could afford to squash the picture down a little bit more. So we close this down. Bitmap handle. Oh, we're over a thousand. Let's stick with the rules and just bring it out just a shade. Unfortunately, it's not dynamic, that bitmap handle. And this has got some strange characteristics as well. Even though it's got handles on it, you can't pull them until you renew the handles. We'll just go back to handle again and we'll check the bitmap and we'll see that we're now down at 933 pixels per inch, which is good. This bitmap handle that we keep pulling out here is a very powerful tool. Um, I'm not going to show you how to produce brilliant pictures with this tool. Um, it's something you'll have to experiment with for yourself. All I'm trying to do is to show you that the tool is here and here approximately is how I have found out how to use it. It doesn't mean to say it is the way to use it but at least I found out a way to make it work. The first thing I hope you notice that when this picture was brought in it automatically converted it from a color picture into a black and white picture. So you don't have to do any black and white transition outside of this program. But when we're in here, it depends what image you want to finish up with. I think we'll stay away from invert at the moment and we'll just go straight down to this thing called dither. We're going to choose the first one in the list, which is called net graphics. And then they ask you to choose the frequency of the lines. For a picture of between 500 and 1000, the book recommends that you use between 30 and 40 lines per inch. So let's set it to 30 to start with and see what result we get. Now nothing appears to be happening. That's because we have to press this button down at the bottom here called apply to view. Looks a bit strange, but after you see some of the other possibilities that you can get, that's quite a good picture. At the moment, we've only applied it to this little thumbnail view. We haven't applied it to this picture up here. So we can't see what the end result is really going to be. We can apply it to the source picture which it's now done, but it doesn't look as though it's done it. That's because you have to press OK to get out of here and you need to click on the picture. And there we go, that's what it's done. It's converted that picture for you now. If you don't like that, go Control Z and Control Z and it steps you back to where you started. And now you can repeat the whole process again and try and improve on it. Hmm, it's not that bad, but then again, what you have to be very careful of is when you're looking on the screen if I go to the middle of this horse and I zoom up, the quality of the picture changes because of the resolution of the screen and the interaction between the, the, the scan dots and the screen dots. Don't necessarily believe what you see on the screen here because if you go to preview up here and you take a look, we seem to have lost quite a lot of um, definition of the picture around the eyes and uh, one of the things that's confusing is the background if you notice. 
So maybe I should go and prepare the picture before we import it to remove a lot of the confusion from the picture. OK, for comparison what we'll do, we'll bring in another version. Import Harry 2. Scroll out with the mouse. Shrink the whole thing down. Pop him on the page. And bring the page back to life full size. Let's just put him up the side there so that we can see that he's got roughly the same number of pixels on him. So you can see I've basically removed the background. OK, let's check with the bitmap handle now on that one. And you notice we haven't changed with the contrast or brightness at the moment. All we do is we just fiddle with this one control, which is Dither, Net Graphics, and we'll put it up to, say, 40, which is the maximum that they would recommend. And then we'll apply to view. Well, that looks quite reasonable. Um, you can see that it's the shape of a horse now. It's not hidden with the background. And we could try apply to source. And then we do OK, and we will click on the source. Maybe the eye is not as clearly defined on that one. And we take a look at that white piece over the eye, but then again, maybe that's all to do with the resolution of the picture itself, or resolution of the screen. Let's see what options we've got for improving it. So we do Control Z, Control Z. This gets us back to the original picture. And now we put the handles on it again. And we can't unless we click out into nothing and then go back to click on the picture bitmap handle. We can have a go at fiddling with the contrast a little bit. Let's take the contrast up by say 10. Apply to view. Maybe we take the brightness up by the same amount, 10%. OK, let's do a, a check now and see what we get. Always make small changes because if you make big changes it'll just <laughs> just destroy your picture. Dither and we'll have something like about uh, 40. Again, we'll stick with 40 for a, hopefully a good resolution. Select Net Graphics, Apply to View. We'll apply it to the source and then we'll close this down with an OK and we'll go to the source. Now that's not bad because look we can see much more of the eye now we can see much more detail on there so should we go more? Let's be daring should we? Control Z, Control Z. We've increased the brightness and the contrast now to about 20% and we will see what we get. Hmm, Not as good I don't think I think we've probably gone over the top Apply to view. Apply to source. OK. Click. Yeah, look, we've got just that little bit of extra definition up here above the eye now, so we've got the full shape in. So I think for the moment we'll quit while we're ahead on this one. But now what we want to do is to put a little bit of text in there. So we'll go across to here and we'll have a go at putting some text in. We've got Harry in there already. So we say OK. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Here's a bit of a problem that I've come across before. Once I've put my text in there, I mean this is really annoying that the only way you can actually get, move that text now is to put the handles on the picture when I can get the handles on the picture and physically move the picture off the text. And then I can move the pic then I can move the text onto the picture. Although it's got layers, there's nothing in this menu that allows you to promote layers up and down. But having said that, what we have got up here is the ability to promote the tooling layer up and down, and it makes me wonder whether or not, now that I've done that, and I've promoted Harry to the top layer whether that allows me to put handles on Harry. No, it doesn't. So I'm afraid the only way that we can move Harry into place is to move the picture off of Harry, then put handles around Harry, 
and move that into place. Now it looks a little bit big. I can't even go in and edit Harry, I don't think, on this text. All I can do is grab hold of the handle while I've got it there and change the size of Harry. So it's a very seriously limiting piece of graphic software. I know it's not designed for graphics. This is where you swear <laughs> because I forgot to put Harry or perhaps I can do it up here can I? I forgot to put it on a different layer. Harry? Yes I can change it up here can I? Layer? Black. Can I change it to a red layer? No I can't even change it. I can't even edit it up here. Ah oh dear so this is frustrating. So I've got to put the handles on here, move the horse off, Put the handles on Harry, go to the red layer and, and click Harry. So Harry, oh, handle on Harry, click on the red layer. So Harry is now red. So now we've got to put the handles on Harry and move it onto our picture. Then we've got to put the handles back on the picture if we want and move the picture around. But before we do that, let's just get rid of that one delete and we'll move Harry here back to the corner well after all that faffing around we've um, we've got the correct end result now what we've got to do is to set the tooling up. So we've got our bitmap on top. Now would it make sense I suppose to cut this out? Yeah let's do that should we? But I think we'll just put a rectangle round here. Right we've got our rectangle round there now which we're going to cut out but we can't cut it out at the moment because we've not defined it as a cutout layer. OK, here comes the frustration. I can't pick up anything except the horsey layer. So I've got to move the horsey layer away. That leaves me the frame which I can mark and I can change that into a, a blue layer. And here it is up here, blue layer. and it but now I want to get this one back into the middle of here and the way that we do that if you remember is we make this one the second one so we need to select the handles on the horsey picture so we push shift select handles then we put the handles on here around the group and then we can come up here and we can use this one and this one to put everything back into line Whereas I thought these tools were going to be fairly useless up here, all of a sudden they've become quite useful because of the lack of flexibility with so many other things in this software. So let's go and look at our tooling. The black layer, speed, 100 seems quite reasonable. Blowing, yes. Scanning mode, well it's got to be a scan mode. And I think what happens is that as the lines scan across they change the intensity of the beam and you get varying amounts of beam power as you pass across each line. OK, the interval between lines I've set that to 0.3 which I think probably is quite reasonable. The beam width produces a cut that's somewhere around about 0.4. So Harry's red on its own so it will get scanned inside just the Harry. I'm totally confident of that. So we'll click that out. Scan speed 100, I think that'll be OK scan yeah we'll leave everything the same for that 50 50 now the blue layer which is a cut layer now hopefully after we've cleaned the mirrors we should find that this works quite well we should be able to put that maybe at 15 let's try 15 cut and we take the cutting power up to 90 90 that's good so that's both the drawing file and the machine file saved I will just transfer that file onto my uh, memory stick and then we'll go out and see what it looks like on the machine.